most people are comfortable with the idea that magnets, when you turn like fields to each other, for example, south pole to south pole, that they push against each other, they repel. And that's kind of what I've got here. I've got the magnets alternated so that their repelling fields are facing each other. Now all of these magnets come out of uh, microwaves. Here are some smaller neodymium magnets which are even more powerful especially considering their size. Now the interesting thing that you may not know is the effect that magnets have on conductors. That is like wire. Something like this. I want to demonstrate this so let's see if I can do that. I made this in a previous video and you can click on the link here to watch that one. But basically this is a wire I believe it's aluminum and I have coiled it up around a piece of iron. All right, I'm going to take this magnet and as you can see we're producing a voltage. I've increased the stack of magnets to try to increase the magnetic field. Let's watch the voltmeter now. And there you go. So as you can see, when a magnet passes by a wire, current starts to flow as indicated by the voltage. So there are three things that you need in order to have this effect. One, you need a, something that produces a magnetic field. You need a conductor. And you also need relative motion. If I just sit the magnet here, there's no voltage. But when the magnet is moving, as you can see, there's a voltage being produced. I have one more example I want to show you that uh, demonstrates this principle. All right, so we got our battery hooked up. And when I turn this on, as you can see, it's producing a magnetic field. That magnet started moving. And there you go. <laughs> it's now a magnet, or it was. It's gone. No magnetic field. But uh, it was so powerful, it actually pushed that magnet away, way over there. That was pretty impressive, actually. Let's try it out again. All right. See the compass needle? Right now it's aligned with this magnet, but as you can see, and if you watch that neodymium magnet over there, so there you go. When you run electricity through a wire, it produces a magnetic field. When the magnetic field passes a conductor, that conductor itself becomes a magnet, as we saw earlier. And the magnetic field that's produced by that conductor opposes the magnetic field of the magnet that's going by. Now, the way I want to demonstrate that is I'm going to take this uh, neodymium magnet here and drop it inside of this copper tube. And uh, let's see what happens. In fact, uh, I'm going to use my phone to videotape this so we can have two perspectives. While the magnet is passing through the copper tube, the copper tube itself is becoming an electromagnet in the region right around the magnet and the magnetic field is opposing the magnet, which is slowing down the descent. Now, just to prove to you that it's not friction or anything like that, I've got a larger copper tube. Let's try that one. And it falls a little bit faster because the magnet is further away, but it's the same idea. 
But if you need to use something that doesn't conduct at all, then you get what you would expect. The magnet just falls. So how do we turn this uh, magnetism and electricity into something useful? I'm gonna pretend like this is a shaft and we'll use this threaded rod to give us something to rotate about, okay? Now, we already know that the magnets attract and repel each other, right? But what if we could rotate the magnetic field around the shaft? Then the magnet on the inside would follow it, right? Or you can make them repel as well, like that, by simply turning to the opposite side. But doing it this way is not all that efficient, right? What if there was a way to move the magnetic field electrically? Well, that's basically what the commutator does. So I think we're ready to talk about that guy. First, let me describe the parts that we have here. This is called the stator. And inside a permanent magnet motor, there are two permanent magnets. Now you could reverse this. The magnets could be here on the rotor. And then you could put uh, windings here and then rotate to fill electrically. In fact, that's basically how a brushless DC motor works, but we'll probably talk about that uh, some other time. Uh, in this event, we've got a permanent magnet here and here, a north and a south pole, and this is what's called the stator field. This is where the, the magnetic field is produced by two permanent magnets, and because this part is stationary, it's called the stator field. Here, we have the rotor, you see that there's a whole bunch of laminated plates and they seem to be all glued together. Uh, these are all sheets of iron. There's a reason they use sheets instead of making it out of one solid piece, but uh, this is a beginner's video, so we're gonna save that for another time. But basically they laminate all these pieces together and that helps to enhance the magnetic field like I showed you earlier. And you can see what should look familiar to you, coils of wire wrapped in between these loops. Now, I'm going to show you on this one over here, you can see the same thing. Coils of wire uh, looped inside the iron slots here. Now, each one of those coils come down and touch this guy, which is called the commutator. So you'll have one bar on this side and then directly opposite of that, you'll have the other bar that touches one of these coils. And so when you touch those two ends electrically, like so, you energize that coil and it becomes an electromagnet. All right, now we're getting to the meat of it. So we have a magnet down here, just like we have a magnet in the stator. So what will happen when I energize this here in a little bit, uh, one of these coils is going to be electrified. It'll become a magnet with a north and a south pole and it'll want to align itself with the magnetic field down here at the bottom and it'll begin to rotate. But these guys over here, these are, this is a brush assembly and these are carbon brushes. And uh, let me take that out and show it to you and then I'll tell you how it works. All right, you can see there's a copper wire there and this is where these two wires that come out of the back, they come in and touch these two brushes. So one wire is going down here and one wire is going here. This is what supplies electricity uh, to the rotor. As you can see that there's a spring here. In this case, you've got a material that's both conductive and uh, you can push it with this spring. That'll keep contact with this commutator while it's rotating you know, at 4,000 revolutions per minute. So that's basically what this does. This supplies current to the rotor and helps to turn our rotor here and specifically our individual coils into electromagnets. When that first coil starts to rotate the shaft, the brush will then start to touch the next two coils and it's kind of like a, you know, a squirrel running in a cage. Uh, as he steps on each rung, the cage is moving under him instead of him actually progressing forward. And that is uh, what's happening, at least electrically. The electromagnetic field is always displaced from the permanent magnet, and so it's constantly chasing that. And whatever energy you can produce there can uh, be put out at the shaft here. Let me put this back in and let's wire it up. Over here, I've got my 12 volt battery and I've got a switch wired in between that just makes it so I don't get a big spark every time I hook this up to the battery. All right, let's see what happens. I 
Okay, don't get too excited yet. We're gonna turn it back on. A couple things I want you to notice. Number one, it's rotating towards me. I'm just gonna flip this over. This is my south pole, and I've indicated my north pole right there. And now you can see it's spinning the other way. So it's it's uh, really neat. And there's one more thing I want to show you now. And now that I've got current flowing through it but no magnet, you can see there's a north, there it is, and a south pole. I'll see that one more time. I love this thing. So anyway, uh, there you have it, uh, electromagnetism, and this is the permanent magnet and DC motor. Uh, hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If I have uh, made any mistakes or omitted anything, I will add comments to the description, so be sure to check that. I do intend to talk about the three-phase motor, um, the other induction motors, the universal motor, and there'll be videos like this. If you want to be notified when the next video comes out, just hit the subscribe button that'll come out right here. I'll put a couple more videos up here so you have something to watch while you wait. And until then, thanks for watching.